In this video, I'm going to go over everything that you need to look at before you do an HE351VE turbo rebuild. So I'm going to cover everything that you need to check before you do the rebuild to ensure that the rebuild is going to be successful. This is a sheet that I just started including with all of our rebuild kits. If you don't have this, you can email me and I'll send it to you. This will go over everything that you need to know about what to do for the rebuild, but this video is just going to be on checking all the parts so that you know that the parts are good before you do the rebuild. This stuff is also needed or necessary for you to know before you do the rebuild, but what I'm going to go through is this side of the sheet. Everything that you need to inspect before you put this together so that you know the turbo will not leak oil or have any problems when you go to put it back in the truck. The first thing you need to check is for scarring here on the bearing seats. So you can take your fingernail and rub it across it and make sure there's no scarring. Another thing to check for, an example is this shaft. You can see there's brass transfer on the bearing. Usually when you see that, there's a situation where there's no oil or not enough oil for the bearings to be able to have enough lubrication to prevent that brass transfer. If that's the case, usually you need to do something about your oil pressure or you may have a restrictor and you may not need one. Make sure that this area right here is not damaged. You can also check the piston ring groove gap right here to make sure that that's in spec. If you put the piston ring on, well you can do it this way too. I got two and a half thousandths here. This is a new turbine shaft and piston ring. The filler gauges are pretty cheap. I paid five dollars for this one at my local auto parts store. I got it at Advance Auto Parts. Then you want to check to make sure you have any, or don't have any fin damage. If you have any fin damage, in some cases you could still use it, but if it's severe, then it really needs to be replaced. There's also people that talk about checking the shaft to see if it's bent or not. That's really not as common as people think. The things that I'm explaining here is a lot more important for you to check than people claim on the internet because they really don't see this stuff on a daily basis, though I do, so I know exactly everything that you need to check. So if you follow this guide, you'll have all the information you need to do the rebuild correctly. Here's the shaft that came out of the turbo that I'm rebuilding. It didn't have any scarring on the bearing seats, which is pretty common for the VEs because they usually don't have a contamination problem but it did have a big problem with the rear seal area where this area is worn down see how the turbine shaft is now out around where the rear seal area sits if this happens sometimes it mushrooms the shaft area where the rear seal is and the piston ring seal will not go back on so now i'm going to show you how to check the back of the bearing housing to see if it's worn out too far or if it's usable. You need to take the piston ring seal and press it into the back of the bearing housing to check the gap. So this piston ring does not compress like it's supposed to. There's a very noticeable gap here. As a result, the turbo will blow oil after the rebuild. So this bearing housing needs to be repaired. To repair this bearing housing, this can be machined out and then a piece pressed in. Here's, here's a piece that I made to be able to fix this one. So I have to machine this out three thousandths tighter than this piece, press this piece in, and then I have to put this bearing housing back on the machine and machine this piece out after it's pressed in. And then machine it to spec. Here's what it looks like with the piston ring gap on normal bearing housing when installed. You can take your feeler gauge and stick it right in that gap to measure it. I got two and a half thousandths on this one. However, that's probably because this bearing housing is still dirty. Another thing you need to check is to see if the bearing seats are scarred up. You can take a pick and run across the bearing seats to see if you feel any grooves up and down like that. If you don't feel any resistance, then the bearing housing should still be good. 
So if the back of the bearing housing says TS1 on it, then you need the oversized bearings. We include that in our, one of our rebuild kits. We have three separate rebuild kits for these. I'll link to them all below so you can figure out which one you need. There's a groove in the back of these bearing housings that also needs to be scraped. Usually burnt oil builds up in here, so you need to scrape all that out before doing the rebuild. Here's how to check the front seal area. This one, the seal area is probably still good, but the problem with this one is that the turbo had so much side to side shaft play that it wore out the plate. So once I push this piece out of this plate, it usually won't go back in. So I'll show you what that looks like. See a groove is cut into the plate to where there's now a step because of the shaft play and that step usually won't allow the piston ring seal to go back in so if you need one of these plates if you're in a case like that you can contact us i'll i'll send you over to the correct place to buy it if i don't have it if i do have it i'll send you a link to purchase this item there's several different plates so you have to make sure you buy the right one this one is the HE351VE. All of the HE351VEs were the same, but the 300VGs, there are at least two variations of the plate. And then go with the bearing housing, so you have a matching bearing housing. I highly recommend that you watch the videos based on, or on this uh, list that I made, because they go, one of them goes over the variations of the 300VG and VE, and you'll be educated on what it is that you need to purchase if you need to repair your turbo. Just like the bearing housing, we need to take the piston ring seal and put it inside the plate to check to make sure it's still good. In this case, even if the piston ring does compress in this plate, you likely will have a really hard time getting the seal to go in there because it now has a step on it on the inside of it where it's worn out. So I got the piston ring to finally go in. The gap here, using my feeler gauge, is two and a half thousandths. That's two and a half thousandths, it's feeling pretty tight. Even though the gap is good on this one, I'm likely gonna have to throw it away because I don't think that I'm gonna be able to get the collar and piston ring seal back into place on this one because the way it stepped out. Here's the bearing housing for the VE. One thing you need to take note of if you see something like this, this is a huge problem. This gasket was probably homemade, I guess, and this hole is not big enough for this oil to drain. So what I think happened with this turbo is that this oil could not drain out of this, and as a result of that, I think it had a backup of oil pressure inside the cartridge and caused problems with it. This ridge right here, all or that diameter you see from here to there, that is how big the drain is. The drain is 20 millimeters on this turbo. Because of that, the oil can't drain out of the turbo, causing pressure, oil buildup and pressure inside the cartridge. The oils usually force out the piston ring seals, even if the piston ring seals are still good in this scenario. I want to show you what has happened to this turbo. The bearing seats are perfect, no oil contamination at all, but it had a thrust bearing issue. And this is very unusual for a whole set because they have the most durable thrust bearings of any turbo on the market. So these failing is very unusual. So what I think happened in this case was that it didn't have the proper drainage which caused problems with it. It was either that or they ran so much boost that it caused this piece right here to shatter. It's possible that it caused that piece to shatter, but see, whole set rates these servos at 44 PSI, so people, that are out there running more than 44 they can kind of almost expect that this could happen though i i don't see it very often and based on the drainage i would think that the drain may have had some effect in the failure of this turbo 
there are people running more than 50 pounds on this servo even though Hullset doesn't rate them at that. Make sure you go by what Hullset recommends. If you want to run or make more power, usually you should just go with an upgrade. This is just a factory turbo. So the compressor housing is also damaged too. So I'll, if this guy doesn't want to upgrade, then I can just swap him out one where I'll just machine his for an upgrade and give him a new stock or another stock turbine housing. You also should check the uh, turbine housing for damage too, right here. And then you want to look down in here to see if this divider thing is cracked, but it's not. This one's in perfect shape. So this would be a really good, reliable turbo to rebuild. You also want to check for cracking on any of these pieces here. But I have a video that shows you how to check this piece and the vein. So I don't want to go through that on this because this video is long enough.